Feeling like a failure can be one of the most uncomfortable and unpleasant experiences in life. We often go great lengths to avoid this failure, to the point of not even trying at all, or give up right before we're about to succeed. You have to know that temporary failure is a part of life. In this video, I'll give you three insights I've learned that can help you embrace your failures to help you keep going when you want to quit. Let's start with number one, now. Number one, don't sabotage yourself. A 2010 study published in Appetite magazine found that when people were convinced a mistake made them a total failure, they were more likely to sabotage themselves. In one experiment, dieters were fed pizza and then told they completely blew their diets. Those who thought they were complete failures immediately ate 50% more cookies than individuals who weren't dieting. Rationally, this doesn't make sense. You would think that if these dieters ate pizza, then they would want to avoid eating cookies to avoid further damage. But humans aren't always logical. Often what happens is that we let a setback derail us and say to ourselves, I blew it. There's no point of even trying now. And then completely sabotage our progress. I know I've done this in my own life. Last year, I committed to making an animated video once per week, no matter what. And for a few months, I kept that commitment. But one week, I didn't make a video and felt like a complete failure. That one missed week then turned into several months of not making any videos. At this current time, I'm back to striving to make a video each week. But if I happen to miss a week, I'm telling myself it doesn't have to derail me. I can get back on track the very next week. The same is true for you. Don't let one setback derail you. Let that slice of proverbial pizza you eat simply be a slice of pizza and then get back to getting healthy after that. Don't let that slice of pizza turn you into a cookie monster. Number two, embrace your emotions. This happens often when things don't work out the way we'd like. I can think of many instances over the years liking a girl and going on a date with them and then being informed she wasn't interested. As a defense mechanism, I would tell myself it's for the best and that I didn't even like her anyway. But lying to yourself isn't the answer. Because when you're afraid to process your honest emotions, you may find yourself going to great lengths to avoid having them in the future. In this scenario of me experiencing rejection from a girl, I'm better off embracing my honest emotions. I liked her, and it would have been nice if it worked out, but it didn't. I'm sad about it, but that's okay. What's surprising is that when you're not afraid to process your honest emotions you experience after a failure, whether they be anger, embarrassment, or sadness, you're much more willing to try again. And as you're willing to try and risk failure again, you'll be much more likely to experience future success. And number three, take appropriate ownership. Have you ever noticed that blaming others for your failure can make you feel so good, but it never helps you become better? You can't always take full blame for everything that happens to you because there are some factors that are out of your control. But when you fail, don't look for an excuse to feel better. Instead, look for an explanation of why you failed. For example, you could try out for the basketball team and not make the team. You could make an excuse. You could tell yourself the coach doesn't like you or that you have terrible genetics. Although this can make your failure to make the basketball team more palatable, it doesn't help you make the team the following year you'd be better off owning up to the possibility you didn't make the team because you weren't skilled enough. You could then start practicing your jump shot, your dribbling, 
and conditioning yourself to have a better chance of making the team next year. Excuses can make you feel better, but they can't make you become better. When you take ownership for your temporary failure, you give yourself more potential power to alter your future outcomes. My friend, I hope these tips help you with any temporary failure you may be experiencing. And if you're looking for more ways to transform your thinking for the better, consider subscribing and look for future videos that post on Mondays. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.